Hey fellow tennis nerds, welcome to another tennis nerd video. Uh, sporting today a tennis made hoodie. Uh, my buddy Simon James has this brand called Tennis Made. You can check it out and uh, they have some funky tennis apparel there. Today I wanted to talk about Prince rackets. I've uh, done a bunch of first impressions reviews of ripsticks, of Synergy, of the Synergy DB26 and there's another blacked out frame here that I'm going to talk about as well. I wanted to give you kind of my more full impressions of all these frames now. I've tried them more, I've played with them a lot more, tried different setups and so on. Let's start with the Synergy DB26. It's a throwback to the DB26 Synergy from a while back. Looks really nice and old school. I tried it with a few different string setups. The one I, I really enjoyed was the hybrid I've talked about in other videos. It's Luxlon Element in the mains and all the power in the crosses. The element to give it a bit more comfort, the all the power for a bit more control. I usually put element around uh, 51 pounds and all the power around 49 pounds. You can play around with that depending on the racket of course. It feels like an attacking player frame. It feels more like a pro staff style frame, the 315 gram pro staff. Mine was a little bit under spec which made it pretty easy to swing. Very uh, flat trajectory from on the ball so that's the old school thing. Uh, could generate some spin but that's not the main uh, thing with this racket. 16-18 in this case creates a pretty flat ball and it all depends on the string spacing and the other things. You cannot look only at, on the, at the string pattern, you have to look at all the aspects of a tennis racket. Pretty sizable sweet spot uh, for an oldie, uh, old school frame. It's the, the shape of the head, it's a bit different. I also like the idea with uh, quite a drastic CTS beam where you have the tapering of the beam being very thin in the handle which is sometimes uh, very nice on the one handed back and you're preparing your, your little players are holding uh, the, the frame here and if it's thinner it feels probably better on the hand that's, that's what my opinion at least to a pretty aggressive 25 26 millimeter beam up here uh, which is pretty rare so up here it's a pure drive down here it's a prestige and it creates an interesting uh, response decent power it's not a power frame but when you're attacking the ball it gives you the needed power to put away the shots and, and I really enjoyed hitting with it just an overall nice frame for attacking players that like a lower trajectory compares well with modern frames it's not a spin frame it's not the most forgiving frame on the market but for you who like a little bit of an old school feel with more forgiveness towards modern frames. I think this one is, is an interesting choice. I have a hard time sometimes with the head shape when they go a little bit rounded or, or too wide, but it does create a bigger sweet spot. Not the most comfortable frame ever, but it's not a harsh frame either. It's kind of in the mid range. If you have arm problems, I might not go for it, but if you're uh, no problems at all, this is not gonna create issues for you especially if you string it with hybrid or uh, poly at a low tension. So that's the Synergy DB26, nice throwback released at the 50 year anniversary of Prince. I really like when they bring back frames that were good and still are good. So this leads us on to the modern version of Synergy. This is just called Synergy. It's a 98 square inch racket, uh, definitely a more uh, forgiving I would say than this one but the heftier swing weight is 305 grams on strong weight so you're in the territory of a blade uh, balance is more towards the head so when you add strings it's around four points head light 33 centimeter balance swing weight on strong listed on the frame thanks Prince for that 300 so you're looking at 330 plus with strings and um, has this uh, kind of uh, shaped beam here uh, which is very nicely done that is supposed to create less wind resistance less drag it's supposed to really flow through the air well and it does but it's still the swing weight you feel the swing weight it might be tricky for players go going into that territory 330 plus swing weights you have other frames like the technifiber rs305 another frame i really like a little bit stiffer than this one uh, so maybe not the most arm friendly frame but also a beefy swing weight still a bit faster through the air than you'd think as you can see the head shapes of these frames are somewhat similar uh, this is not as aggressive in the beam thickness 1818 uh, string pattern is the most standout feature M more for advanced players with the swing weight being so high uh, it requires even more from the user than this one I would say 
but a very nice response in the string bed that it's plush, it feels good. It's not like the most Eureka inspiring um, experience ever when it hits the string bed, but it's, it's good, it's a um, solid frame, good comfort. One of the issues I had at times was some unpredictability in the string bed. It handles flat bolts well with the 1818 string pattern, but at some spots I felt like I didn't get quite the control I was looking for. That would be my own only peeve. I'm not sure if other players experience that. But overall, uh, I prefer this frame over the old school Synergy. And this was a very nice racket strung with Hyper-G Soft 1.20. Um, you can string it pretty low. You get nice spin from the 1818 pattern. So the pattern I think is interesting. Pretty evenly spaced with the holes. Uh, so this was a positive experience. The downside being maybe that it had some inconsistency at times that I felt, uh, but otherwise very solid. Um, very nice for advanced players. You can hang around the baseline all day. If you like a blade 1820, give this one a go. Now we move over to the Prince Ripstick. And th this is a new line. It's the coolest looking tennis line in a long time. It looks amazing in my opinion. I really love this design. It's funky AF. This is like a pure arrow, thick beam, lots of power, aggressive O-port design. And if you don't know about O-ports, the O-port technology is supposed to create more string movement and it really does, obviously, with the holes being so big as well, you, the string will move a lot, which will reduce string uh, life. You will need to restring all, more often with this one, for sure. And uh, not saying that's necessarily always a bad thing because players keep their poly strings way too long in the racket. So if a racket forces you, like the Clash, for example, to do that, well, it might be a good thing for your arm and for your tennis. Comfort level, much better than most tweener frames, most thick beam frames. I really feel no arm issues with this frame. I love this frame. I think it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's not the most controlled racket. The ball can launch on you a little bit at times. So you're gonna get a high launch angle. You're gonna get a lot of power. It's not gonna be the easiest to control that power. You need to have kind of a modern technique to play with this frame. Flat hitters, they shouldn't really bother too much. Although it does handle slice shots well, still it's a spin frame. This is for you who like to hit with spin, who want to get extra depth on your spinny shots. Uh, aggressive baseliner, defensive baseline or whatever, but you like to hang around the baseline. This is not a racket I would play my probably best tennis with or I would normally like. I play with prestigious, I play with ultra tours, maybe to my own detriment, but I just like that more predictable feel. Doesn't matter if this is pre predictable or not, I just have a lot of fun with this frame. It's arm friendly, it's powerful, and it you know forces you to play with spin and uh, just very creative racket. And maybe the design of this frame just makes it more fun to play with, I don't know. But I, I just love the thinking behind this. And if you're interested uh, in the guy who designed these frames, uh, listen to my podcast with Tim from Prince. And I gotta give him props for, for the guts he had to uh, he had to really design these frames and go like all in. The 300 has a pretty beefy swing weight. So I would more look into the 280 if you're maybe 3.0 NTRP. And if you don't know what NTRP is, there is a post tennis ratings explained on tennisner.net. The 280 has more weight in the head to make it more stable, a little bit easier to swing. Could be played even in stock form. I've actually played it against some decent players. Plays fine. If you're a lower level intermediate player, go for the 280. If you're a flat hitter who like to get to the net and you want to play precise tennis, classical style tennis, don't bother with the ripstick. Last but not least, a racket I haven't played a lot with, so it's not reviewed yet. Just wanted to highlight it. Prince Phantom 100G LB. What does LB stand for? It stands for long body. Long body means that it's longer than the average frame. So this one is 28 inches long. The standard is 27 inches and it's quite an extra length on this handle. I prefer 27.5 inches. I think 28 becomes a bit too much, a bit too cumbersome. I'm a one-handed backhand player. This usually works better for two-handed players with the extra grip, grip space. This crossbar, from a visual point of view, it's not what I like, to be honest. I, this, this bothers me quite a bit, but I, it's a visual thing. It's supposed to create more stability. It's been in, on Prince frames for a long time, so it, it has some heritage value. But yeah, it bothers me a little bit. Thin beam, low flex, phantom style racket, just extended length and a crossbar. So we'll see how does it play. I like the phantom rackets. You know I'm a fan of those arm-friendly rackets.
Prince Rackets might need a little bit more of an explanation when it comes to the different families, as I've done with other brands. So I thought I'd get in, into that with quite a few families for Prince. Ripstick, Power and Spin, Synergy, it's a more classy, advanced control racket. Phantom, high on control and comfort. They have the classic, which are the reissues, such as the Synergy DB26 and the, the Prince Graphite Oversize. We have the Twist Power. I haven't tried that one. It's a new frame based on power and some spin as well. We have the Tech Stream Tour, which is also a bit more power focused, but with some good control from a thinner beam. We have the Legacy Rackets, more for um, I mean game improvement, veteran players, players who need help with power and spin. And Warrior is still there, but they're not going to be available anymore as far as I understand. Talking about Phantom, let's, let's just quickly look through the different Phantom rackets. Comprised of three different types, P, X and G. The P versions have a more classic box beam, giving them a slightly softer feel. The X versions have more rounded and aerodynamic beams, giving them a slightly crisper and more powerful feel. The G versions have classic box beams along with the Prince's iconic crossbar. The Prince Phantom 107G is an oversized racket with the crossbar. The 100G, which is a standard length, you have the long body version that I'm going to review, uh, which I talked about before. You have the Prince 93P, very traditional frame, excellent control, uh, one of the my favorite rackets and um, but very demanding to use with the small head size you have 93p 1418 pattern very aggressive with the spin you have the 97p a little bit of a forgotten racket sadly because it's a very nice plush feel and not so easy to generate power with but a good competitor to the prestige mp and the ultra pro from wilson the phantom 100p very nice racket i reviewed this highly really like this arm front flex. you could still hit spin pretty nice on flat shots as well Probably my favorite Phantom, the 100P. 100X, very arm friendly. I'm gonna revisit the 1820 version because I didn't give that enough time, I think, in 2020. You have the 100X 290, lower weight. These are more open, and this one is the uh, tight pattern with more weight. And you even have an O-port version, uh, which I found very difficult to get stability and pace with, but it's because it's O-port and flexible, it's gonna not have a lot of punch. So that's the Phantom lineup, very, very control fo focused, but at least you get the idea with the P, the X, and the G. If we click at the Tour version, you have the Tour 95. I didn't try the new version. I love the first generation, ultra controlled, low flex. The new one I heard is a little bit more erratic, a little bit stiffer. I was a big fan of the Tour 100 310 version, just a brilliant racket. You can see the review on my channel, great for intermediate players who want a little bit more power on their shots, but not go all the way to a pure arrow, for example, or a pure drive. Techstream Tour 100P, similar racket to that one, but with an 1820 pattern uh, for a little bit more control. Still feel they're very close, those two. Techstream Tour 290, it's a weight difference. Iga Sviantek used that one before she converted to Technifiber. If we look at Classic, we will see um, the CTSC Synergy DB26 and the Graphite 107. There's reviews of both on the channel. The Graphite 107 is a legend, super hefty, but hits a, a massive ball. Twist Power, I haven't tried. It's a new line, a bit of a funky design. Really have to look at this one more closely. The shaft design, the twist, this looks really cool. Not sure if it does anything but it does look great. I would love to try one one day. Thicker beam in places, but that thin 20 millimeter beam uh, as well. Tweener style frame, uh, but all these families can make you a little bit confused. I'm, I agree with that. I'm also a bit confused of where where all all goes. It's not as clean as the Babala or um, Yonex, which, which is where you see a really clear idea. Even the um, head frames, although there are many of them, have at least the CPI scale. And I think Prince is doing away with their power scale that they used to have so it's going to be very hard to understand these the legacy frames are more for uh, veteran players uh, players who don't have a you know advanced swing or a longer swing more for just playing doubles and um, enjoying tennis with some free pace and depth on your shots not sure if they will do anything about this line uh, the warrior 100 was a best seller easy to use tweener style frame with with better comfort than most tweeners and 66 sorry not sure if this one stays or goes where did the beast line go? I'm not sure. Uh, from what I've heard, they, they will keep the beast line, but it's not around here. Just didn't sell as well as probably they thought it would. That was a shame because the beast line was pretty good. If we look at Tennis Warehouse Europe, they have the tattoo 
O3 racket, which is um, the O3 version of the Tour 100. Quite unique look with the tattoo paint job and the skull. As you can see, to the beasts are here. So the update to the Warrior line, but in the US they still sell the Warrior. And I couldn't find Beast. Here you can find Beast on sale. So I can really recommend the Beast 98. So it's a good kind of frame to um, compete with a Pure Strike, for example. Not as powerful, maybe, but close and more better comfort. And the 1620 pattern is nice. I really like that because you get a good um, balance of control and spin. Prince is a little bit over the all over the place. They make very nice products, but uh, they might need to uh, have a more strict strategy when it comes to where they want to be in the marketplace, how they want to work with players, if they want to work with players, what's their strategy with the rackets. Prince still around. They do create nice frames. I give prints a lot of love. Why? Because they do focus a lot on the product, not so much on the marketing. They could improve their marketing for sure. It's a little bit of a different situation with prints as we talk a little bit about in my podcast. They've had a pretty rough history at times, recent history, with ups and downs in the company, ownership and so on. Still going strong with the racket design, still creating great rackets. They don't have a lot of players that endorse their frames. Funny thing with the Prince brand, you see these Guys, uh, you have Niklas Kicker, uh, you have a lot of guys, they all still use their old Prince frames, no paint jobs, nothing. They use their old like port frames because they love the feel. They don't even get frames from Prince, I think they just have to buy them uh, used. Not sure what the status is there. I think Prince would probably do better if they paid some pros to use their frames but they don't. I completely understand that you need to do that to fight in the industry, but I think that if you like a Prince frame, you use it no matter if you're a pro or not. I hope this video gave you an idea of uh, these recent Prince frames. If you want to buy one of them, check out my affiliate links to Tennis Warehouse Group, Tennis Warehouse Europe, Tennis Warehouse and Tennis Only below. I appreciate every help. It doesn't cost you anything. I get a small commission. Helps Tennis Nerd stay alive. Also, if you need help choosing a racket, check out the Tennis Nerd consultation on tennisnerd.net, both via video call or email. The, there's also a Patreon page for you who like to support there, get more content, patreon.com slash tennisnerd. That's pretty much all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.